North America isn't worth the trouble. Let Montcalm invade it. Withdraw our forces and concentrate our armies here in Europe, the main theater of war. Newcastle wants to give the country back to the Indians. <laughs> what do you propose, Mr. Pitt? To reinforce Colonel Monroe at Albany, sire. Uh, move General Webb up in support and drive the French out of North America as we're doing in India. For a wilderness. For the raw material of an empire, sire. And what does the Duke of Marlborough say? I agree with Mr. Pitt entirely, sir. Uh, yes, the war office, but mayor. Major Hayward is ready to take the next packet to the Americas. He will carry out his patches and remain there as second in command to Colonel Monroe. Uh, uh, do you think you'll find any difficulty in adapting yourself to a new country, Major? The British Army has always adapted a new country to England, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you may proceed, Mr. Pitt. You have cut much. Thanks, Your Majesty. Uh, Your Majesty, Pitt's as mad as a hatter. Your Majesty? I wish he'd fight some of my other ministers. You uh, direct me to Colonel Monroe. Well, you'll likely find him at the platoon's house at Anson. Oh, thank you. Are you in the habit of addressing officers with a pipe in your mouth? No, sometimes I chew snuff. <laughs> Give you a lift, soldier. Your presence, Miss Cora, changes this Dutch village into paradise. No, sir, you're so impetuous, you frighten the wits out of me. <laughs> this is the first time I have seen your daughter Cora so gay, so carefree, Colonel. Yes, my dear. The girl had a sad experience. The young lad she was to marry lost at sea in a naval engagement. I, I thought this trip might help her to forget. Pardon, my dear. There's an officer to see the Colonel. Duncan Hayward! Why? What wind blows you to America? Good to see you, sir. So, you bedeviled Marlborough into granting you furlough after all. No, sir. Important dispatches. Oh, action at last. Well, I'm in need of brush with the French. There is tail as ditch water here. I suppose you know what this says. Yes, you're looking very well yourself, sir. Is you? Oh, oh, I see. All right, go and find Alice. Report back to me in half an hour. Thank you, sir. Last time I saw her, she was in the garden with a very attractive young captive. I arrived in the nick of time, didn't I? Yes. <laughs> Looking for someone, Major Hayward? Alice! Job, I've looked forward to this. You haven't changed a bit, Duncan. Well, can you blame me? You've no right to look so beautiful. As gallant as ever. And you're just as cruel. After I've braved the wide Atlantic to be by your side. Yes, I suppose you do deserve a reward, don't you? Well, that's a very small kiss after such a long journey. You know, I had hoped you might have changed your mind about me. I haven't, Duncan. I'm sorry. So no chance someday you might be different? It isn't fair to ask you to wait. You see, a British officer never gives in without a struggle. Spoken like a true Briton, sir. And Miss Monroe, you may consider yourself in a permanent state of siege. I shall welcome it. <laughs> Come on, let's find Cora. She'll be delighted to see you. Oh, yes, how is your sister? Oh, ever so much happier here. Gentlemen of the regiment, attention. Your colonel has orders. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. All officers must report to their quarters at once. 
We march tomorrow. How are you, Colonel? How are you, Winthrop? This is Major Hayward. Mr. Winthrop, sir. How do you do, Major? Colonel, I think you're going to be a little short-handed. My men seem to think this is all your fight, none of theirs. Winthrop, my orders are to advance my entire command to Fort William Henry. Engage Montcalm until reinforced by General Webb. The war office didn't realize that half my command were colonials. However, we march today with or without you. Whether we go or not is for my men to decide. And to sound the assembly. We'll talk to them. Yes, sir. Howdy, Hawkeye. Oh, uh, it's you on a Tuesday. Hiya, hey, come on, see? What you to town? I've been trapping up on the border. What are you boys turned out for? British wanted to march up to Fort William Henry with us. Yeah? What's the matter? Haven't you enough trouble here at home? Man, Colonel Monroe has asked me to say a few words. Having just arrived from England, I can assure you that His Majesty King George is eager for your support. I feel sure that as loyal subjects of the Crown, you'll be glad to render this valuable service to your King. Just how far from the settlement will this campaign take us, Major? To the main outpost, Fort William Henry. Why, that's a good two days' march, maybe more. It should be enough to remind you that France is our enemy. Your enemy, not ours. Sure, we ain't a fighting France, you are. We ain't a fighting no one, except engines. I ain't fighting them if I can help it. <laughs> Wait a minute. This, this isn't war. This is merely a skirmish. Then you'd better get ready to skirmish, because I've just come from trapping on Lake George, and here on Walford is a canoeing down from the border. That's all the more reason then for you colonials to join us. You can do what you want with your own scalps, Major, but don't start telling us what to do with ours. Here, where are you going, Indian? Me, Magua, scout. Come see big white chief Monroe. You colonials. By helping us to defeat Montcalm, by helping yourselves to defeat the Hurons, who are the allies of the French. Yeah, and while these men are cooped up in Fort William Henry, let the Indians burn their homes, butcher their families. Come to Ticonderoga, see Montcalm. Montcalm? Why, that means the French are... Men, I just learned the French are advancing on Fort William Henry. You know what that means? If they break through, they and their Indians will loot and pillage Every settlement this side of Lake George. Are you going to let that happen? Or are you going to help us to stop them at Fort William Henry? Wait a minute, boys. I believe the men will enlist, sir. On one condition. If the Hurons break through, let them come back and protect their homes. How about it, boys? All right. Agreed. What do you say, men? What do you say, Hawkeye? I had my say. Well, you've learned your first lesson about the colonial. He'll play the game, so long as you don't try to make the rules for him. We were lucky to get out of that, sir. Yes, you need a bit of luck in this country, my boy. Who is that man talking back to Duncan? Oh, a fellow the Indians call Hawkeye. He's a scout. Very good one, I understand. Why? I thought we hanged traitors. Yeah, so did I. <laughs> well, this is a country of forests. But I doubt if there'd be enough trees to go around if we started hanging people for speaking their minds. Well, I went along and peck. When you keep one man waiting, it's coquetry. For a thousand, huh, treason. Oh, uh, Magua. Take this to the quartermaster. Give this to Bago. Sullen beggar, that. He's the best scout I have. He's a mohawk. I had to give him a taste of the cat once, but it made a man of him. Yes, he probably deserved it. I wonder what that... 
that weasel's doing here? Him scout for Yengeese. Mohawks take him in tribe, make him blood brother. More. He was born a Huron. I'd better rifle against a powder horn. He's still a Huron. Come on, we'd better warn Monroe. It's the petticoats that make it so full. Nothing like a woman's modesty to take up space. I want to talk to the Colonel. They told me he was here. Colonel Monroe is not here. It's sort of important, ma'am. You doubt my word? No, of course not. Only I wanted I'm to talk. I'm sure the Colonel would not be interested in anything that you might have to say. You'd be an awful fool then, ma'am. I came here to be of service to him. You of service? If you want to be of service, why aren't you in uniform? Maybe I've got too much sense to wear a red coat in the woods. Perhaps you'd be interested to know that the Colonel is my father. I'm not, ma'am, not a bit. You see, I want I to... said the Colonel is not here. You're sure of that? I'm positive. come to? Yes. You think it's safe, sir? Oh, for those seasoned campaigners, my boy. Hardware no short trail. No good for army, good for small party. Splendid. You hear that, Hayward? If you don't mind, sir, I'd like to accompany the young ladies. Well, that's one way to enjoy a war. Come along. <laughs> Down. Water horses. 
Don't be a fool, man. Never water a mount when he's sweating. White Chief, right. We wait. That fellow's taking long enough watering those horses. Duncan, do stop grousing. Oh, it's all nonsense. Hey, you, hurry up! My people. Oh. What do they want? Want pale faced squaws. What? Don't let him alone. Magua, great warrior. Did White Chief Monroe whip Magua like dog? And you deserved it. Now Magua wipe out scars. Pale-faced squaws live. You die. Get me a muscle. Quick. Don't shoot. Can't you see they're different from the others? I don't trust any of them. If your aim's as bad as your judgment, Major, I don't imagine there's much danger of you hitting them. What are you trying to do? Among other things, trying to keep you from being burned at the stake. If you aren't too green to burn. You tell them to stop that. Too late to put them back. And scalps to the Indians, Major, like your medals, and gotten by the same means, killing. Well, we better get back to the main track and join the column. We'll never get through. You better come with me. I'm quite capable of taking care of these ladies. So I noticed. What's that? Wolves? On two legs and headed this way. Follow me. Our horses, where are they? Killed you fool, what for? Indians can hear a horse for miles in the woods. <coughs> Come on, grab a musket. Go on, follow the vehicle. I hate running away like this. I'll wager that fellow's exaggerated the danger. Why should he? He doesn't impress me as a man given to exaggeration. Maybe here on canoes in cold. Yeah, maybe. Chief daughter rest. Okay, watch. Thank <laughs> you. 
Come on, into the canoes. Now, wait a minute. Where do you think you're taking it? Major, I'm not asking you to trust me. I'm taking the latest. But if you'd rather wait for the Hurons, that's your affair. Hear that? Come on. children till sundown. So I'm feeling this, Monroe. I knew these folks and blazed the trail that brought them here. This is how my parents died, fire and scalping knife. It was terrible. This won't be all. With the men at Fort William Henry, no son will be safe. Will you accept my apology for what I said when I first met you? That's all right. You didn't know any better. I do now. We'd better get back to the canoe. 
stop now. What are we going on? Just as soon as I finish patching the canoe. You know, I keep thinking there's an Indian behind every tree. My scout feels very uncertain. You don't scare easy, do you? I'm with you, and you seem to know your way about the woods. I ought to. The Mohicans raised me after the massacre. Never saw another settlement till I was ten. And this has been your life, this far east? Yes. Aren't you ever lonely? Lonely? Yes, I mean, curious about the rest of the world. London, for instance. A man could spend a lifetime exploring this country and never walk the same trail twice. Men have only touched it. Way out beyond the Ohio is a land where no white man's ever been. Every time I open up a new trail, I, I like to think that others will follow. Maybe someday build a big city at its end. I wonder if you can understand what it means to be first. I think I can. Something frightened that deer. Maybe we did. No, we are downwind. We better get out of here. Fool separating our parties like this. Two party alive. Good. One party dead. No good. What on earth are you doing? Listen to Beaver. Downstream. Indian sentry. One canoe come. Beaver flap tail. Hawkeye brings sister so. Oh, I do hope so. Hawkeye find way. Like Indian. Hawkeye same as uncle's brother. And the other one? Is he your father? Chingachgook, Sagamore. Great chief of Mohican. And you? Uncas, little chief. This mean Mohican chief. Mohican? Are you taking us to your people? All my people gone. Killed in Huron War. Once many warrior in tribe. For many summer, this our hunting ground. Now only Chingachgook and Uncas left. You're all alone. So am I. Hmm? My warrior died in the sea. Uh, chief? In your way of speaking, yes. Then your son would be his. A chief. Makes life dreams. Mohegan chief, no wait on squaw. Someone come. Thank heaven, you're safe. Alice, we were so worried. Cora, you weren't afraid? Yes, no, not at all. We were perfectly safe. Duncan, I think you owe the scout an apology. Well, I apologize for mistrusting him, but I shan't forget his insolence. There's lots of time to settle our differences, Major. In the meantime, we've got to think of the latest. I agree. I suggest we get some sleep now, leave at sunrise. We leave now, or we'll never see the sunrise. Come on.
I hope your earthworks are built to last, Captain. Our British friends are not too hospitable. We may be knocking at their door for months. I brought you here to shoot redcoats, not floating logs. Log float against wind. The credit belongs to this scout. I hadn't suspected you as an ally. I'm not. My only reason for helping the Major was because of the ladies. At any rate, accept my thanks. Will you come to the Colonel's quarters later? I'd like to thank you also. I'll attend to that, my dear. I'll reward him personally. Major, any reward I got coming from you, I can do without. Alice, need you be so familiar with that fellow? Duncan, you're talking like a fool. On active service, discipline's an important thing. I was only thanking him for saving our lives. Well, need you be so effusive about it? After all, you're the Colonel's daughter, you know. When you say things like that, Duncan, I like to think that it's the army talking, not the men. How many young geese in the fort, Magua? Two thousand. And their wagon? Fifteen wagons. They'll be short of provisions soon. We start pounding tonight, messieurs. Tonight, sir. We leave as soon as the moon sets. I wonder if we'll ever meet again. Some trail cross many times. Some trail cross only once. I shan't forget you, Uncle. As many dawn as are mine, so many shall my prayer to the Great Spirit be for the one with the moon in her hair. Face squaw, no good Mohican. Fair hair make heart of Uncas weak like water. You can't blame him, Sagamore. Hawkeye's heart weak like water. You were going to leave without coming to. I'm not much of a hand at saying goodbye. But you'll never get through. Sagamore and I'll have to take our chances. Tell me, why are you going? Well, I... I haven't changed my mind. The Colonials made a mistake when they came here, and there's not much reason for me to stay. Seems you have a healthy contempt for everything British, haven't you? I haven't noticed the British busting in the chairs whenever they see me. That's because they don't know you as I do. Chances are you'll be caught, Marshal, if they catch you talking to me. I came to ask you to stay. You know I don't belong here. There's a fence between your world and mine. And you have a trail to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a very sad trail that leads back to nowhere. There's an old Indian saying, a trap awaits the otter who follows the same trail twice. No, it just doesn't make sense, you and me being friends. 
I don't care whether it makes sense or not. I'm asking you to forget logic and reason. Won't you please stay? Looks like Montcalm means business. Yes. We're surrounded and badly outnumbered. We need every rifle. Sounds like the French have changed my mind. Double duty like this calls for full rations. Not hard tack and water. Courage, my boy. Let us praise the Lord that he may vouchsafe to us as to the Israelites. His manna in this wilderness. Even if it is made of plaster. At ease. No sign of reinforcements yet? None, sir. I can't understand it. We're only 15 miles from Fort Edward. Webb's had over ten days to get here. It's possible that his reinforcements from England haven't arrived, sir. So the war office assured me they'd be sent at once. War office? They don't know this confounded wilderness. I could lose an army between here and New York. Poor devils. Well, the soldiers is cursed to suffer in silence. The soldiers privilege, sir. Pity we have more men to fight. Or less to die. Surely, sir, the French couldn't have intercepted all our runners. Well, what else? There's no reply from General Webb. Well, at least I'm glad they carried verbal messages and not written ones. Perhaps one did get through, sir, but the message might not have seemed as urgent to General Webb as a written dispatch. Yes, he's right there, sir. He certainly wouldn't ignore a message in your own hand. If he got it? Well, an Indian might get through, sir. Yes, you can try again. All right, let one start at dark. Yes, sir. All clear, Hayward? All clear to the outer defences, sir. Pity we couldn't hold them. We could have covered the lad better. Guard these dispatches with your life. We're depending on you. Good luck, lad. Mm. Get up on the parapet. Cover him. Uncas, watch shore of lake. Many Huron canoes and reeds. All right, Hayward.
be hurt. No. No. Good lad. Take him to the dressing station. Easy, lads. Careful now. He's my friend. I... I'm grateful. You can save your thanks. I couldn't let this dispatch fall into enemy hands. Is he all right? Right as rain. Tommy Hawk wound. Knocked him unconscious, but did no permanent damage. We'll have him around in no time. You did your best, Tanker. Chiefs mark my people. Do Mark speak? It says Semper Valor. That means always brave, like you. Your warrior. My warrior who died in the sea. Far away. How is he? There. Got squaw fever. Ottawa arrow. Go through, Uncas, bullet pouch. Ottawa like Huron. No good. Burn. Kill pale face. Slow death. How many in that tribe? Many, like leaves in forest. I think we ought to take a look at their camp. Mm-hmm. We can get to him through the swamp. Our brothers, the Ottawa, go to English village, take scalp. <laughs> settlements, it'll be the bloodiest massacre the frontier's ever known. And the blood colonel will not be entirely on their hands. But my good man, I tell you, Montcalm's in command. And I assure you, he's a soldier and a gentleman, not a butcher. And I assure you that he can't stop them. We can handle the situation when General Webb arrives. He never will arrive. And anyway, Montcalm outnumbers you and Webb combined. You're short of food, supplies, munitions. We'll defend our colors to the end, sir. The end will be the massacre of women and children left unprotected because of your stubborn pride. You forget yourself, sir. Perhaps I do. But I didn't forget your promise that the colonials would be released if the settlements were menaced. My promise still holds good. But I must have more definite proof than your word. His word was good on this frontier long before you came here, Colonel. There's no use continuing the argument. The situation demands the colonials stay. If this is an example of British colonial policy, We'd do better to make our own peace with the French. That's sedition, sir. Well, whatever it is, it's the truth. I'm under an obligation to you, so I won't have you whipped from the fort as you deserve. But get out of here. Major, I think someday you and I are going to have a serious disagreement. Quite probably. out of the swamp till you've cleared the French picket lines. The Hurons are holding a powwow, so you don't have to worry about them. All right, boys. No noise. And keep close to the man ahead of you. Yeah, we should have skinned out of here long ago.
Let's go in. We ain't got no families, Captain. Figured we'd stay here and give the Redcoats a hand. I too. When you have no ammunition, you need prayer. Mm -hmm. We'll keep an eye on the Redcoat sentries. Oh, you mean to say you weren't coming? No. Why, well, but don't talk, hurry. You gotta clear the French outpost by dawn. Good luck, Captain. Well, what is it? Did you see what he did was heroic? He knew the consequences and stayed to face them. Oh, you're not hanging a man for mutiny. You're hanging a man for doing what he thought was his duty. Oh, Father, can't you see how unjust it is? I'm sorry, Iris. Duncan, can't something be done? No, he knew the regulations and he knew the penalty for breaking them. I can't understand a man sending a woman to plead for him. He didn't send me. You know he wouldn't ask you for anything. He, he hates you. And so do I for saying such a thing. I apologize. But why are you here? You know the army, its regulations. I'm here because I love him. Yes. Oh, that was it. Alice, you know I'd do anything I could to keep you from being hurt. Even to saving this traitor. But the man's beyond pardon. It's the army, it's justice. 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 If that's your idea of justice. Then the sooner the French guns blow the English army out of America, the better it will be for the colonists. Alice, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. For once in my life, I'm speaking from my heart, not out of an army book of regulations. And if it's sedition, well, I'm proud of it. idea where we are? About five miles from the fort, sir. We'd better hurry. We won't reach the French outpost before daylight.
done well, Magua. Order a parlor, Chevalier. Be it's incredible losing a head over this man. I'm recommending clemency for the Indians, but the scout knew what he was doing. But Carm is asking for a parley, sir. A parley? Well, we needn't grant it, sir. I don't know. We'll give the men a rest until we arrive, every hour counts. All right. If the Frenchman wants to talk, we'll oblige him. Turn out a guard of honor. Yes, sir. gallant antagonist. I am happy to make your acquaintance as a friend. And I to make yours, Monsieur le Marquis. I have long realized that even outnumbered as you are, it would be merely a waste of breath to invite your surrender. You are correct in that assumption, Monsieur. As a soldier, I know that one of your courage does not surrender until his cause is proven hopeless. Monsieur le Marquis, I am a soldier, not a diplomat. You have called this parley for a better reason than an exchange of compliments. What is it? My scouts intercepted a dispatch intended for you. A dispatch, monsieur? Read it. Colonel Monroe, Fort William Henry. No reinforcements available. Transports delayed by storms at sea. If you cannot retreat, advise immediate surrender of Fort William Henry. Signed, Webb. This may be a trick, sir. No. Webb signature. You have no alternative, Colonel. Your own general advises surrender. I know the temper of our men, sir. I'm sure that rather than spend the rest of the war in a French prison hulk, they'll fight to the end. You've heard your answer, Monsieur le Marquis? Good day, sir. No, Colonel, I beg you not to sign the death warrant of so many brave men. Listen to my terms. Which are? The fort must be destroyed. Your men must lay down their arms and return to England. Further than that, ask what you will. The honors of war? They are granted. My colors? Take them to England. Carry them to your king. I accept your terms, sir. What is yours? in half an hour. The girls been called yet? They're dressing now, sir. Shall I have assembly sounded? Check it, Cajone! French say peace. They say bury our hatchets. 
make the Huron warrior dead. Our hatchets should be red with the blood of our enemy, but they are bright. We have no scalp. We are without honor. There are plenty of English scalps. We get them. <laughs> have broken into the fort. They're massacring the garrison. No. Reinforce the guard, Chevalier. Summon the 5th Regiment. Soldier, I've known both, but this is the first time I've ever known disgrace. The disgrace was not yours, General. No one could stay the savagery of the yoke. I'm proud. My last battle was lost to you, General. There is no stigma in being vanquished by such an adversary. I'm more grateful for those words than I shall be for His Majesty's decorations. We've looked everywhere for your daughter, sir but can find no trace of them. But we shall continue the search, Colonel. Every British officer shall be given his parole to look for them. It's my turn to be grateful, General. My men recovered your sword from the Hurons. 
I beg to return it to you. Thank you, Daryl. I shall need it. Again. Stalking, Robin Redbreast, Worms. Well, now that you've tracked me down, I wish you'd get on with the shooting and spare me your wit, such as it is. Tracked you down? Shoot you? <laughs> no, Major, when I go hunting, it's after mountain goats, not sheep. I guess we're on the same mission. I'm looking for the young ladies. Now, you're headed in the wrong direction. Better come along with us. Gen Gee's warrior, like white squaw in forest. No good. It's his right to come. I'll join you, but I want you to understand that I still consider you a mutineer. And if ever we're under British jurisdiction again, I shall enjoy pressing charges against you. We understand each other, Major. <laughs> took to the stream to keep us from knowing whether it went up or down. Uncas, try upstream with the Major. We'll go down. Uh. Please come over a mile. They must have gone the other way. Look. Stone turn. Cora's ring. Good girl. We're going to get the others. No, wait. No time. Leave Mark for it. i 
living here your life. How can you even suggest such a thing, Alice? Party out. Which way? Follow me. Can't let him go alone. They must settle it by their own tribal laws. We can't interfere.
Lucas. Father in heaven, we ask you to receive them in your mercy and wisdom. This girl who's died on an alien shore, and this boy who's perished to save her. Lucas should have waited for us. I'll never forgive myself for letting him go after Cora alone. We still got Alice to think about. I'm afraid it's hopeless. They've got her under heavy guard. We still have one chance. What's that? The Hurons had a prisoner they prized more highly than Alice. All right. I'll go. They wouldn't take you. Why not? British officer? They've had him by the bushel. There's only one Hawkeye, I suppose. Well, they've waited a long time for a chance to burn me. Supposing they took you and wouldn't release her? They wouldn't do that. Even they have a code of honor. Well, they shoot you on sight. You wouldn't get a chance to explain. The wampum is the red man's flag of truce. They'll respect it. You know these Hurons well. Never spoken to any, except Margaret. We weren't exactly on speaking terms. Do any of them know you? Only at shooting range. So the British Army is going to be cheated to the pleasure of hanging you, eh? I'm afraid they will. Sorry, Yankee. Had to be done. Enemy. I'm Hawkeye, tribe brother of the Mohicans. My rifle Kildare has slain many of your warriors. Hawkeye does not follow your own trail without long gun. The long gun brings death. I come to ask for a life. You speak with twisted tongue. You have a pale-faced woman prisoner here. What are you going to do with her? She die in fire. <laughs> There is no honor if a woman dies in your fire. <laughs> but there is honor if a warrior dies so. A warrior as great as Hawkeye. <laughs> Hawkeye! <laughs> will Hawkeye go to stake if you're in set squaw free? I will. But you must promise that when I'm dead, you'll guide her to a place of safety. Hawkeye, great warrior. His words are good. You're on Thomas. Duncan! Fred, 
little mixed. I'm Hawkeye. Now, that's very interesting, Major. <laughs> or maybe I'm the Major. But no, no, no. Hey! Who are you? Hawkeye. The man's lying. He's a crazy Englishman. Got knocked on the head. This one come to village. Say him Hawkeye. Want to go to fire for you. Now this one come. One die, one live. Squaw, no. What does it matter? I'm the prisoner. Send them both away. Hawkeye make bargain with Huron. Him die in fire. Squaw tell truth. I can't answer that. You don't need further proof than my clothes. Many Yankees wear cap of skin, robe of deer. Your arms never see face of Hawkeye, but no Hawkeye long gun. Bring rifle. No, no, wait a moment. Take squad away. No. What please, Emma? Uh. Hmm, bare weapons. Major, let's see how the British Army shoots. There's your target. I think you can hit that by firelight. We're not playing pitch penny, Major. This is a shooting match. I bet that's the best shot you ever made in all your life. I'll try and beat it. Another jug? No. Jugs are scarce. That'll do. into our village. Take squaw. Start. When sun come over hills, my warriors go look for you. I ignored your hand once, Yankee. Can I shake it now? Bring squaw. <laughs> Promise me something. You have till sunrise till they start after you. Sagamore's watching. He'll find you and take you to safety. My orders are he's not to come back for me. My orders, Major. Understand? I have your word. Yes.
Bring in the prisoner. You're charged with striking a superior officer, inciting to wholesale desertion and high treason to the crown. A formidable list of charges, sir. Major Hayward, you preferred the charges. Give me the details. The charges, sir, are correct. Each of them is a capital offense. Explain the charge of desertion, Major Hayward. He did incite the men to leave the fort. However, I might point out that if he hadn't done so, those colonials would never have met your command to save them from an Ottawa ambush. And you yourself mightn't be here in Albany to pass judgment on him. <coughs> May I ask, sir, do you stand before this court as his accuser or in his defense? Neither, sir. I'm merely telling you the whole truth. Thank you. Now, regarding his seditious utterances. Well, sir, I don't remember the actual words, but it was the heat of the moment that made them seditious, and not the thought behind them. He was concerned with the lives of the unprotected women and children in the settlements. I'm sure you'll agree that these are sentiments in accord with our British ideals. And British action. Since you're so familiar with the case, Major, I welcome a recommendation. Well, sir, personally knowing the value of this man as a scout and realizing our lack of them, I would recommend that he be enlisted in the British Army in that capacity. What do you say to that, sir? Well, I, I guess after all, we're fighting for the same thing. I'll join you, General. Thank you. Charge is dismissed. Court Marshal adjourned. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I've always promised him a taste of British justice. <laughs> well, we march to Canada. Goodbye, Alice. Goodbye, Duncan. The court have fallen. in. I always thought it was beautiful until now. Well, this goodbye has been a little delayed. Does it have to be goodbye? Aren't you going back to England? I have nothing to go back for now. I'm going to stay here in America. But this is no country for a girl like you, Alice. We've got a job on our hands. You know, it takes more than rifles to make a new civilization. It takes spinning wheels, too. And, well, that's a woman's way of being first. Oh, when you come back, I'll be waiting for you here in Albany. 